Well, praise the Lord, saints. It's that time again for us to journey in together and share with the Word of God. We pray that you're all doing well. We appreciate your prayers, remembering us in your prayers, keeping us up before the Lord, that he's taking us through each day. And I pray that God is watching over you and, and your family. You know, I wish you all well. We continue to get you up in prayer. That God will bless you, that he'll sustain you, that he'll protect you. And this, in this little time we're living in, we're living in an evil, critical time, so we got to pray the blessing of the Lord be upon us. And I, and I believe the Bible says we have faith and believe. We confess him, accept him, which I do every day. I confess him, acknowledge him, that he's my everything, my all in all. And I pray that you should do the same. Always acknowledge him in all your ways. And the Bible says he would direct your path. Thank God. We're gonna give it. We're gonna ask you to get your Bible to read along with us if you can. Those you can get, uh, be willing to get your Bible and read along with us while we get into service tonight. But first, we're gonna go in prayer. Ask God if He would bless the service tonight and speak to our hearts. And thank God that He'll give us something that will help us encourage us. Anything that help us keep holding on. The Bible says the enemy is out there as a roaring lion, seeking whom we may devour. So we need something, any, anything we can get from God to help us to hold on. You know, the Bible says it's going to be a falling away. We're in a, a good, right time now for people just falling away, you know, from God, you know. But we're going to pray that it all be well with that God hold and sustain us. Holy Father, I thank you tonight. Lord, I appreciate you, Jesus, and I thank you, Master, for glory, for blessing us. Thank you for waking up this morning, God. I laid down last night. I said, God, will keep us through. I know a lot of people laying down, waiting, uh, looking forward to seeing that election, election stuff, God, and they didn't make it. Lord, I thought about that last night as I laid down. I said, God, I was looking forward to hear about that election, see it, God, I said, sustain me and keep me. Lord, you not take me out of my sleep. Lord, not thank you for waking me this morning, clothing me in my right mind. Lord, I'm glad I, I asked you that you bless the others and thank you for raising them up and preserving them and keeping them. Walk with us tonight, Lord, through the word of God, Lord. Be our guide and be our very present help, Lord. Watch over the peoples and their dwelling places, Lord. I, in the name of Jesus Christ, and as we bind every spirit of Satan that try to rise us up, or maybe from this election, Lord, everything is in your hands. I'm asking you, God, to be mindful of your people, Lord. If you know, stuff rises up, God, be mindful of your people. Protect them. Keep them covered or with your blood. In the name of Jesus Christ, tonight feed us from heaven according to your will. Lord, and according to our needs, you feed us. Speak to us. Lord, I'm asking you if you would be mindful of the sick tonight. Lord, heal the sick. Lord, I'm asking you to deliver the bound. Move Jesus some kind of way for our nation. Got you. You're in control of this stuff. You know who should be in there, who shouldn't. And I'm asking you in Jesus, Lord, it's probably... We probably get the less of the two evil. But God, I'm asking you, Lord, to be in control, be in charge. Whatever you do, be mindful of your people. And Lord, we will thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Keep us covered, Father, with your blood, Lord. And keep us hidden behind your cross. In the name of Jesus. And I thank you. Praise God. I appreciate the Lord tonight. We're going to give you a speech in a few minutes. But, but you know, God is in control of all this stuff. We got our wishes and our desires and our will but Lord knows what's best for our nation. He knows what's best for the people. The Bible says he decreed the ending from the beginning. He decreed the ending from the beginning so he knows what's best. So we said God just help us to be pleased with you. Whatever you do God help us to go along with you. Help us to be on your side. I pray that all the time because you know we don't know God's will. Too often we don't know God's will, but you know we pray, God, whatever your will, I'm for you. Whatever you for, I'm for it. I may not understand it, God, but whatever you for, I want you to know that I'm for what you for. And I believe God will help us. He'll watch over us during the, these times of crisis, you know. And I, I thank the Lord for it tonight. We're going to get ready to go through the script. We won't hold you, Lord, and I really appreciate it. i probably get through here, probably go and watch some of that election, you know, see what they. No, but you, you know, you, you never, you never know what God's gonna do. They be looking one way, but God may say this ain't the way it's gonna be. I think as I minister weekend, I believe your God ways is 
it, it's a lot higher than ours. And their thoughts is higher than ours. So, you know, we just try to stay on the Lord's side. Thank God. So we're going to go to the book of Ephesians. Ephesians 4, verses 11 through 16. Just bail on me for a few minutes. We're we are not going to hold you long, but God's will. We appreciate him for blessing us this day, giving us a mind to hold on, giving us something to do. You know, but our mind won't get so idle. We won't get so unoccupied. Thank God, you know, sometimes our mind, they got a saying that the, 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 the idle mind is the devil workshop. You know, I, I, I don't know how script that is, but it, it's, it's a good saying, ain't it? And the devil get that mind out, he got an opportunity to bring stuff in there on you. But I thank God for God giving us something to do. Giving us something to prepare for, something to look forward to. It's to minister to him, minister the word, and feeding his people. Thank God. So listen to Ephesians 4, verses, uh, verses 11 through uh, 16. Listen. Old familiar scripture, but listen. And he gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors, and some teaching for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Now God didn't just give these people, didn't give these ministers out, they give them for the for the title of the position. That's what you can say you was a part. He gave these things out. The Bible said he gave out these ministers for the perfecting of the saints. That they may be able to go out and do the work of the ministry. For the edifying, guys, what I'm giving, when I'm, I'm giving these gifts, and a lot of people take advantage of that, and they get it on to exalt themselves and pat themselves on the back and thank God they are. But God didn't give us that for that. He gave it for the working of the ministry, for the perfecting of the saint, the strength of the saint, the help of the saint. This is what God put this up. Because God was concerned about His people, and He put these gifts, put these power, this authority, and now thank God that for the perfecting, the help of the saints, to help them get over, help them get through, help them to make it. And this is what this is all about. If we lose that mind, thank God, of trying to help people, we lose that mind, what we're supposed to be doing, what God have, whatever God has given us, if we lose that sight of what God has given this thing for, then we begin to walk in the spirit of error. But God said, I put these in the church. Is that not the boast on I'm a prophet? I hear a lot of people used to. Oh, I'm prophet this, I'm prophet that, I'm apostle this. And God didn't give you that for you can brag on it. He gave you that for the help people. If you got it, you give you that ministry, give you that authority, whatever that ministry called. There is a ministry for apostles. There's a ministry, I believe, for prophets. There's a ministry for evangelists. There's a ministry for teachers. There's a ministry for pastors. And they all got a job to do. They all got a, don't God will never put them in there. God could put just one ministry in there and let it take care of everything. But there is a work for the pastor. There is a work for the evangelist. There is a work for the apostle. There is a work for the prophet. There's a work for the teachers. And he said that work is for perfecting of the saints. For the working of the ministry. That, that what I give you, that you can go out and instruct and teach for the preparing people, getting people, get them perfected, that they can work for God. For the work of the ministry, the Bible says. That's what God given us these things for. Not to brag on, boast on. I believe we get something God uns get from God and, and have the spirit of God. I don't think we'd be bragging and boasting. You know, when people do that thing, God, most of the time God ain't giving them nothing. Uh, they done just got off track somewhere. You know, because what God's spirit don't allow you to boast. Ain't no boasting in, in God. God give you something that make you um yourself. You don't, you don't have a boasting spirit. You catch people with a boasting spirit and nine times out of ten, the Lord ain't gave them nothing. If he did, they, 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 they don't and slipped away from it. But listen, he gave some apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith, until we come in this oneness. God said, I'm putting these ministry out here so we can come, we can be one. We can come in this oneness of the faith. We're going to be Believe in this and believe in that. God said, I'm putting a word in here. I'm putting a ministry. I'm putting a word. I'm putting an understanding in here. I'm putting my spirit in here. Thank God until we can all come into the unity of the faith, the oneness. You know, we, we, we ain't got no business to believe in this and believe in that. Believe in Buddha today, believe in Muhammad the next day and all this kind of stuff until we can come into unity of the faith. 
and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto a full grown man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Listen, I'm going to read on through here. I maybe come back. That we hence will be no more children taught to and fro and cared about with every wind of doctrine, every teaching. Yes, I'm putting these in the church where you won't be tossed to and fro. You know, won't be believing Jehovah's Witness the, the, the day and tomorrow, uh, next month is Jesus, and next is something else. The Bible says he put in, in, in Jesus, the, the servant that Jesus raised up, they're not going to be tossed to and fro. They're not going to be wishy washy. They're going to stand for Jesus. He said that we not be tossed to and fro no more by every wind of doctrine. Every teaching of the word. Some people are taught they believe this today, and next month you see them somewhere else. You know, and then man, in six months later, they old somewhere else, believing something else, following something else. The Bible says, if we will listen to God, listen to His word, listen to His teaching, then we won't be tossed to and fro. And the Bible says, man, if we get His spirit. Jesus said, man, if you eat my flesh and drink my, you ain't gonna hunger for nothing else. You ain't gonna thirst for nothing else. Once we get and Jesus don't send out a false teaching. He don't send out a false doctrine. His word is ever sell in heaven. And if we are cleaved to this word, ask God to give us understanding of it, then we won't be wanting nothing else. There ain't nothing else like any another doctrine and another gospel out there that I want, that I have no desire for, not another. Man, I'm completing Jesus. I'm completing this teaching now. God has given us that that we won't be tossed. I'm not tossed. I don't care what. People do out there how they speak. I don't care what they sign they try to show. I'm not tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. The Bible says we to be steadfast, unmovable. Folk, this is what we got to do. We got to be steadfast, unmovable. Thank God. So I'm putting these in the ministry. You know, we don't need to have an ear to hear. The Bible says he that is the ear. Let him hear what the Spirit say. We got to pray God give us ear to hear what the Spirit is saying. If we can get this ear to hear what what Jesus is saying then we can be unmovable. We can be steadfast. Because the wind may blow. You may may, may, may have you uh, uh, swaying back and forth. Thank God you'll be rooted in the ground. You, you, won't, you won't be moved. I'm putting these ministry in the church. Listen here. That we be, that we as will be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. By the slightness of men and the cunning craftiness why about they lie in wait to deceive you? Man, they 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 craft it, they cunning. And they I guess some of them ordained for that to deceive you. Listen, but be, and I'm gonna get to another script. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him and all which is the head, and all things which is the head, even Christ, from whom what? The body, the whole body, what fitly joined together and compacted. God have put this body. You already got the old song, you said, well, the foot bone anchor to the it connected to the ankle bone and the ankle bone to the leg bone. Where God had put this in the body, the apostles, the prophets, the pastors, the teachers, the advances, for the working of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, that we may fitly join together and supply everyone parts. You know, that, that my, my shoulder helped my arms to function, to move, to spin around, that old ball socket in there. Well, we're fitly joined together. God put, when he put these ministry in the, in the body, in the church, that they are fit, that we won't be tossed to it for. If we, if we have listen to Jesus, we can work properly. We can function properly. He said, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint, what every joint supplied according to the effects of working in in the measure of every part, make an increase of the body into the edifying of itself and love. Man, your iron is supposed to help your elbow. Man, your iron is supposed to help your shoulder. Man, your, your knee is supposed to help your legs. He yeah, played this in the body spiritually. We ought to be a strength spiritually. We ought to work together spiritually. We ought to be able to function properly. We ought to be able to function successfully spiritually. Because God had put this in the body. Listen here. For the perfection of the saints. Listen, listen to this. Let me. Well, I believe I'm going to go to 2 Corinthians 6 and 1. I, I had a little strip on the go to. I believe I want to throw this in there. 2 Corinthians 6, 1 through 10. 
for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry. God had put these things in it. Not to be, not for patting ourselves on the back. And, he didn't give it to just for a title. These are ministries. These are our works. And God used to help his people. It's not just for a, a title that we can run around and say we're an apostle, we're a prophet, we're a pastor. It's not for that. It's for the work of the minute. Listen, 2 Corinthians 6, verses 1 through, I think I may go through 1 through 10. Listen what it says here. Now remember, God put these in the, these ministry in the church, these gifts in the church. And, and I, I know a certain religion teach that that's been done away with. Ain't got no more parts and prophets. The Bible don't say that. The Bible says until we come into the unity of the faith and one of the faith for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry. And there's a church, folk. There is apostles. There's prophets. If there is a church, God said, put them in a the church. And how many of them come into in oneness, come into full perfection? They still operate in the body of Christ right now. And they will be operating until Jesus come back. That's to help us, to bring us into perfection. That we can go out and work for Jesus. That we can do what God has. And that these ministers teach us, instruct us, encourage us, helps us. Listen to this. 2 Corinthians 6 verses 1. We then, as working together with him, beseech ye also that ye receive not the grace of God in vain. For he said, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I helped thee, secured thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Listen, giving all, giving no offense, listen to me, giving no offense in anything that the ministry be not blamed. God, so I'm putting these in the church that the ministry, the teaching, the instruction that you come into perfection for the perfection of the saints, that in no offense that the ministry be blamed. God don't want the guy to do things for the ministry to be blamed. He said, I'm, I'm putting these uh, authorities in the church to teach you, to instruct you. If you will listen, that when you go out, thank God, you won't, they can't point the finger at the ministry. The ministry won't be blamed. The ministry won't be condemned. People can't find fault justly of the ministry. And when God sent these ministers out, thank God put his spirit in He sent them out. He put his spirit in them. So the Bible says, look at that the minister. Listen, but very four. But listen to this. Just, we're going to read a little bit. Listen, please. But in all things, approving ourselves what as the ministers of God and what? Much patience in affliction, in necessity, in distress. I'm putting these where you can, for the perfecting of the saints. Paul teaching it for the perfecting of the saints, for the work to bring you into perfection, bring you in that fullness, bring you in that oneness with and faith, oneness in God. He said, doing nothing that the ministry be not blamed. That's why God said these ministers in here to help. Get us on the play. Thank God why the ministry won't be blamed. It's the ministry being blamed too much, not because of us. And I say us as a Christian and people praying their fingers. And giving offense and nothing that the men should be not blamed. And God sent, when he sent, he sent, he, he sent a truth out there, sent a word out there. He sent a direction out there. He sent some instruction out there. And we will follow after it. Follow after men that God has sent. Then we were doing things that the men should be blamed. Listen. And then we do repent that God, I messed up. And get back on track. Listen. He said, but in all things proving ourselves as the ministers of God. That don't mean you got to be in the pulpit, folks. If you're saved, trying to live for God, God, he don't want you to be out there doing stuff to cause the ministry to be, to be blamed. People be finding fault as the ministry, praying the fingers. You strive. You strive. And if we listen to this word here, it'll help us. To, we don't know why that cursing folks out. You know, I, I, just sometimes, you, I, you know, I don't try to jump on people condemn for that because sometimes the devil may make you mad you may accident let it out. Or well, not accident let it out. Just do it perfect, but you repent. And that's God's God forgive me. Don't let nobody be lost because of me. Don't let nobody turn back. Don't let nobody get this scared. Don't let nobody uh, 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 find fault of them because of me. Forgive me, Lord, and touch their heart somewhere where they won't be putting no things at the ministry. You repent. If you messed up, repent. That's God to help you. Say, God, I messed up. And don't let me be the blame. Don't let them uh, uh, 
uh, fall away. Don't let them find fault because of what I've done and what I've said. Man, we got to be careful. The Bible says, take the fit that nothing that the men can be a blame. Listen. Listen, he said, let, let me go back and read that. Giving it no offense in anything that the ministry be not blamed. Giving no offense in anything that the ministry be not blamed. Yes, we had to bend over back at some time. Yes, we had to humble ourselves. Yes, we had to give in. Yes, we had to hold our peace. We're doing this because we don't want the ministry to be blamed. Yes, sometimes it looks like, man, we may have been used or walked over, misused. Or... Yes, that's all right, but you're doing it because you don't want the minister to be blamed. Listen. In patience, listen. In affliction, in necessity, in distress, verse 5. In stripes, in imprisonment, in turmoil, in laborers, in watching, in fasting. By pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by love unfinished, undisguised. You know, sometimes our love man, is disguised, you know. God says, I don't want the disguised love. I want this love undisguised, pure love. But we need to be careful about that. That means me not blame. He said, even in pureness, long suffering, kindness, and by the Holy Ghost, by love unfinished, by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left. By honor and dishonor. By evil report and good report. As deceiver yet true. Give no, if they call you deceiver, give nothing that the minister be blamed. Don't do nothing that the minister can be charged. For. Nothing. It's a, it's a self denying way. I mean, the Bible says, but it's the self denying way. We, we, we don't just sashay into this place, man. We're going to have to do some sacrifice, some giving up. We're going to have to do some denying ourselves, man. We're going to have to take up this old cross and follow Jesus. Because we don't want this man to be, we don't want people to speak evil this man because of us, because of the thing we do. Professing Jesus, you know. As I know. Yet, and yet well known, as dying, and behold we live, as chastened, and not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, and having nothing, and yet what? Possessing all things. Paul said, I don't want to miss me, blame, look here. For your perfecting of the same. These is for... It make it a little hard sometimes. That's all right. It's for our perfection. It's so that we can go out there, and, we can go out there and work, but we can go out there and be an example. Yeah. That the men should be not blamed. That we can go out there and be effective. But people can say, "Yeah, they, you know, they're saved." You know, they're striving. You know, I, I don't mind patterning myself after them. Oh man, the Bible says what to examine ourselves to see where we at. See whether we be in the faith or not. Man, Jesus come back, he come back at the, the pure in heart. You know, come back for the pure in heart. Listen to, listen to what Matthew said. Matthew 10 and verse 16. Listen to this. Now listen, perfecting of the saint is to help us, to bring, get us into perfection, It's to strengthen them, It's to cause us to be strong. Matthew 10 and verse 16 22, I think. 16, listen. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of war. Be ye therefore wise as servant and humble. As you were Jesus done instructing his disciples. And then he gave them the, 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 the put them the minister of the apostles and prophets and all them. And what? To instruct us, to help us. Jesus teach them here, listen here. I'm sending you forth out there as sheep in the midst of wool. Paul, uh, uh, Paul said that in the Bible that God is putting these in the ministry for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the men, that we be no more children tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. Jesus telling them right here, listen, I'm sending you forth as sheep now in the midst of wool. 
So you're going out there, but I want you to have a sheep spirit, but you could be in the midst of wool. So I'm trying to instruct you, trying to give you, prepare you, get you prepared. Paul said, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the men, for the edifying of the body of Christ. We strive, folks. We strive. To, strive to please God. Strive to obey Him. Man, this is a striving way. Jesus, listen here. I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serving humble like the But beware of men, for they will get them. Look what you're doing. Getting, getting them prepared. Letting them know. Getting them prepared. Don't go out and think everything will be hunkered door. Everything will be well. Which you think I said, you're going you gonna to be getting in the midst of wolves. He's be with men, for they will deliver you up to the council, and they will scourge you, and they are sending God, man, he are preparing them. Let them know what's out there. Paul said, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of knowing when you go out there, you're going to be talked about, you're going to be criticized, you're going to be, fame will be praying at you. But he's getting us prepared for that. We got to let Jesus prepare us. We got to let him put us back on that old wheel and remold us and remake us for the work. Get us prepared for the work. Now, it ain't got to be no preacher, no Paul problem. You can be a Christian. There's a work for you to do. There's a light for you to shine. The Bible says we are the light of the world. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the council. And they will scourge you in their synagogue. And ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my name, for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. Listen. But when they deliver you up, take no thoughts how or what ye shall speak, for it shall be given you in that same hour what ye shall speak. For it is not ye that speak, but the Spirit of your Father which speaketh in you. And the brother shall deliver up the brother all oh, men to death, and the father, the child, and the children shall rise up against their parent and call them to put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endure it to the end, the same shall be saved. Jesus is perfecting these apostles, teaching these apostles, getting your mind uh, girded up, getting your mind ready, knowing what to look for, knowing what you got to go through out there. But they go out there and think everything will be hunkered door, everything will be lovely, and all this stuff begin to rise up against them. Thank God they're going to quit Jesus and turn around. That's why we got to hear the word of God. It's for our making. It's for our preparation so we can get out there and not bring Jesus' name to the open chain. We got to pray, God, don't let me bring your name to an open chain. God said, I'm putting these ministry in it for the help us. Jesus told please, I pray for you. Please, Satan desired to sift you. So I to have it. They may sift you sweet, but I pray for you. That your faith don't fail. Jesus instructing these apostles, follow him. Prepare and let them know what's out there. Jesus, listen, as I have loved you, you love one another. As I have loved you, you love one another. But men gonna speak evil to you. People gonna do maybe the Hate for fame towards you. But as I have loved you, love you. Bible said this is the commandment. I, I give you this commandment to love one another. Thank you, Jesus. He prepared. For these these folks, the ministry. I know a lot of people use this, use it for a name and for a big show. And probably get gain for gain. But let me tell you, it's not for that. It's for the perfecting of the saint. Jesus said. Strengthen your brother, Peter, when you get converted. You know the heart of God, you know what the heart of God is? The heart of God is soul. Souls is the heart of God. That's what he come down here to save souls. That's what he didn't come down here to build another big kingdom. He come down here to save souls. Yeah. So the heart of God is soul. And he prepared them. That God prepared us. Let me tell you something. You know, we got to be willing to deny ourselves. Go through what you got to go through. Ask God to sustain you and give you that mind. Listen to 1 Peter. 1 Peter 5 and over. 1 Peter 5. Thank you, Lord, for the perfecting of the same. 
till we all come into unity, into this oneness with God, in the unity of the faith, into the full measure, until the, we get grown in God. It's a tear that we don't be tossed around. You know, you know how the devil is. He makes you believe in this thing today, and the next month you believe in something else. And we had people leave our church and go to the Jehovah Witness. Let me tell you something. Jehovah Witness do not. I'm not trying to uh, put down no denomination, but Jehovah Witness do not believe in Jesus. Do not accept Jesus as their personal savior. Unless they're changed by now, because they change every time they need to. They're changed around. So let me tell you something. But the Bible says, my sheep hear my voice. They know my voice, and the strength ain't going to fall. That's one thing about the scripture. Don't lie. The Bible says, ever selling ever. Jesus, my sheep, she is my voice. They know my voice. And the stranger will not fall. Thank God we get the Holy Ghost and hear God's word. Thank God we ain't going to follow us. You may not understand everything, but let me tell you something. You're not going to follow a strange voice. You're not going to follow a strange voice. And they got that put and got raised up these ministers, raised up pastors and prophets and apostles and, and teachers and evangelists for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry. They can go out there and help people get prepared. For the work that God and God, we all got a call. The apostle got a apostle job. The prophet got a prophet job. The evangelist got a evangelist job. The teacher got a teacher. Don't God wouldn't have to put all these in the ministry? He could put just one in there and let them do everything. But God saw fit to put these different ministries in the body of Christ, and they each have a, a role to play. They have a role to play, but it's for our perfection. It's for our good. Listen, listen. First Peter five. Then what Paul would tell him here, tell the elder, to the elder which are among you, I exhort, who am also an elder, and a witness of the suffering of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight. What is he doing? Strengthen them. What is he doing? Bring them to the family. Listen, feed the flock among you. Willingly. Thank God with a ready mind. It, 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 this is what he was setting there for. The apostle Peter setting there for. And he, what he doing? He strengthened the people, telling the others what to do. For the perfecting of the saints. People was on his job, doing what he's supposed to do. Like we said, God help us to do what we're supposed to do. Feed the flock of God, which is among you. Taking the old sight there. Not by constraint, not force, but willingly. Not for money, feed the loop, but of a ready mind. Neither as being Lord over God's heritage, but being an example to the flock. What is he doing? What is Peter doing there, folks? He's perfecting. He was giving them good sound instruction, giving them what to do, how they should conduct themselves, and how they should minister, not for fear to lose, not being forced, but willing with a ready mind. I put these ministry in the church. And because sometimes people never want to hear, that's all right. If God gives us a spirit, we're going to try to speak Jesus, speak that thing that. It, 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 we don't. It ain't us. It ain't you. It, it's, that, it's that ministry. It's that work. It's that call that we try to heed to and instruct. Listen, neither being Lord of God, heaven, but being example to the flock. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that faded not away. Likewise, you young, submit yourself unto the elder. Yea, all of you. Be subject one to another. And be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud and give it grace. What? To the humble. Oh, amen. The Lord said, we can't go out and be puffed up one against another. We got to be for one another. We got to stand for one another. We got to help one another. We got to strengthen one another. We can't be Lord. If God give us a ministry, give us a prophet, an apostle, or something like that, he ain't give that us to where he can be a lord over somebody, or we can, you know, he give it to the help people. But if, it, like I say, it's, it's, we teach the word of God. God giving him, and we teach the word of God. Not that we have a, a confidence thing in every area. But for the, the, the minister, this, that God gives us, minister this, it, it ain't about us, no way. It's about God. It's about the Spirit. It's about this truth. It's about this word that He's given. And this is what we got to minister to. Listen, it ain't about us. Listen what uh this is what uh Hebrew 5 says. Hebrew, Hebrew, yeah. Hebrew 5 verses 
one through six. It ain't about us. It's for the perfect of the same. It ain't that because we how righteous we are. We can't get up and say, well, my father did because of No, it ain't us. It ain't about us. It's about this ministry. But God has given us. We heed to this ministry. To this work that God has given us. And if we would take heed to this, man, we can help somebody. We can strengthen somebody. We can carry somebody. You hear me say that all the time because I believe in it. I believe in helping people along the way. It's a terrible thing to be lost. It's a terrible thing to die and your soul be lost. Man, it's a terrible thing to die and go there. It's a terrible thing. And this is what we don't want to do. Listen, Hebrew 5 verses of, 5 verses 1 through uh, 1 through 6. Listen to what it says. By every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men in things pertaining to God. That he may offer both gifts and sacrifice for sin, who can have compassion on the ignorant and on them that are out of the way, for that he himself also is compassed about with infirmity. God said, I'm raising these priests up, who can have compassion on the ignorant and them out of the way, for he himself is also, also compared with infirmity. So it ain't about us. We teach this. We preach this. Deny yourself. Take up the cross. We teach this. Love your brother. Love your sister. We teach this. But we, we ourselves compared by with infirmity. But this is the word of God. This is the teaching. This is the ministry that God has given us. Not that we can pat ourselves on back. Not that we don't have to repent. Not that we don't make mistakes. But the word of God is ever sell. The word of God is pure. The word of God is solid. And this is what we need to minister. The Bible says, I'm putting this in there for the perfection of the word I give you. The understanding I give you, the revelation I give you, is for the perfecting of the saints. It, it ain't about you. It ain't you because you're walking so perfect. It, it's this word, ministry that I'm giving you. And the Bible says he set these in that can have compassion on the ignorant and them out of the way because he himself. And I couldn't dare to tell you, man, I don't mess up, make mistakes and stuff like that. I repent every day. Not that I go here trying to make a mistake and mess up. Well, some days I think I do pretty good. But you know, that's pretty good, man. That'd be sufficient with God without his mercy. Without his help. It may not be sufficient. But with the mercy and grace of God, it'd be sufficient. So it's not about us. It's not about no. And that's why we, we, that, that, those are gifts that God put in the church. The part is not about you. It's this ministry that God put in there for the saints, for the people, for the help the people to spend and carry the people. God don't want nobody to be lost, folks. Don't want nobody to be lost. And then for the perfecting of the saints. Man, we get that mind. That's God, God give us this mind that is to help people. You know, when I when I when I get to heaven, I say this one when I get to heaven, I'm saying, saying, saying. When I get to heaven, I'm gonna be. I'm going to be glad to hear Jesus say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Say, you help somebody. You encourage somebody. You strengthen somebody along the way. Now, there were some people out there that were about to give up. Say, you didn't know it, but they were just about to give up. They were about ready to throw in the towel. But because you hearken to me, because you, the ministry that I've given you, it was for the perfection and help the people. Thank God that they were strengthened. They had a mind to hold on. They continued on the hell on another day and another day. Man, I want to hear him say, well done, my good and faithful servant. You've been faithful. Over that which is little. That's what it ain't about us. It's about this work. We're compassed about with infirmity ourselves. I don't care who, what preacher, I don't care what his name is. I don't care what his name is. I, my, my son has got this thing I get where you, they send you some kind of, I don't know if it's a, I don't know what it's called, a novocation or some kind of stuff. They got my phone hooked in there with it too, you know. And he, he sent this thing out, and I read it the other night. I picked it up last night, I believe, and it's about this preacher. And boy, he was doing some tall talking. I about laughed. I know he was saying some pretty some stuff, but man, it was funny what he was saying. I'm, I don't know if y'all can pick that up or not, but you, but you need to look at that. But, but we don't want to be like that. All the fun, we don't want to be like that. We want to be an example, man, because we are compared by with infirmity ourselves. You know, we go through stuff. We fight battle. We wrestle the devil. Every preacher, every minister, I don't care who they are. So God said, listen up. He put these ministers in the church for the 
perfecting of the saints, for the work of the men, and for the edifying of the body. It's the help to, because we all compassionate about with infirmity. Can't nobody get them praying to finger nobody else. You can't judge them. You got to ask God to help us. Listen. And by reading here, he ought to ask Father Peter so also for himself to offer sin. And listen, and no man take this honor unto himself, but he that is called of God as was Aaron. Nobody take up on this. I know we got a lot of people doing it today, but it, it just ain't happening. It don't work. We go out and we claim to be a part. We take up the name of apostle, take up the name of prophet, take up the name of all this kind of stuff, man, bishop and all this stuff. The Bible says we are called. The Bible says, oh, no man takes this honor. We, I, I can't go ahead and jump up to me. Yeah, you know I'm a pastor. You know I'm a prophet. I'm going to go out and be a prophet. I'm going to go out and be a apostle. Right, you don't take this stuff for yourself. These, these are called. These are called gifts. These are gifts sent by God, called by God, apostle, prophet, pastor, teachers, evangelists. These are sent by God. It ain't something you just get out there and decide you want to do. Because if you do, they got something going to pull you away. Favoritism, popularity, money, women's, men, something going to pull you away if God ain't ordained you. You know told us that? And John said, listen, you ain't chose me, but I've chosen them ordained you. Folk, that means a lot. I've ordained you that you should go. Make them hell of high water. Thank God you're cleaved to Jesus. I've ordained that you should go and bring full fruit, and your fruit should remain. When Jesus ordained you, call you. And these ministries, Jesus ordained, it ain't, it ain't something we choose. To, we choose to do good work fine. But don't go ahead and latch on these. Because these, these gifts, God put it for the perfection of the saints. We have anything... Other than for the perfecting of the same, for the working of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, bringing it into the unity of the faith, that we'll be no more children tossed to and fro by every wind that give us something that keep us from being tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine, every wind of teaching. And that's where we at right now, people. You know. Man, a few years ago, this guy come out with this old laughing, the laughing revival. Some guy out of Africa. Sit up there and had his old deep. He's a white guy, but he's out of Africa. Said they had an old deep, deep, old deep demon type boy just started laughing. Uh, uh, uh. And man, a whole had thousands of people following. Everybody just get in a laughing frenzy. And start laughing and laughing. Just laughing. Just, man, they just falling out laughing. Just. Huh? And God ain't sitting on laughing revival. What's wrong with that guy? Hmm? Guys, I'm putting this in the chair where you be talked to him from. And, and no, no doubt, a lot of people that's spoke in Christian following that dude. Get in the church, man. He just started laughing up there. And everybody just fall out just a laughing, a laughing revival. We ever heard a laughing revival? Guys, so I'm putting in the church that you're going to be tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. Thank God we got to be rooted and grounded and anchored. We got to know where we at, know what we believe in, know what we stand for. And that's God to sustain us in that. Don't let us be tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. Listen, no man take this honor unto himself. You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't anoint your own self to be a apostle or a prophet. It just don't work. No man takes honor to himself, but he that is called of God as ever will call. Listen, so also Christ, he would, he would do what the God saying here. So also Christ glorified not himself to be made a high priest. But he that said unto him, Thou art my son, today have I begotten thee. The Bible says here, Christ didn't glorify himself not to make made high priest, but the scripture said, But this day have I begotten thee. Thou art my son, and I have begotten thee. I have begotten thee. It wasn't something that Jesus chose to do. God. Thou art my son, and they have begotten thee. And he, as he said also in another place, Thou art a priest forever after the order of Mel Sister Day. God ordained it. God ordained Jesus. God is the spirit, the Bible says. And God ordained Jesus. This ain't something we don't take on it. I know a lot of people do. You don't take on You don't got to take on these things. I'm a prophet. I'm a prophet. And everything you prophesied was a lie. And people believe that lie. But God said, I'm putting these 
And that's what I strive to do is to, is to help to come in perfection through the word of God. Jesus said, when you're going out there, I'm sending you forth as sheep among wolves. Be you wise as serpent, how many does? I'm, I'm preparing you. I'm getting you, letting you know what's out there. So you be as wise as serpent. But I want you to be humble as dove. Thank God. Strengthen my people. Encourage them. Yeah. And this is the ministry of God. And when God appeared to me in that head, I said, go tell them I'm real. You know? And I said, Lord, this is what I've been trying to do. Tell them that you're real. If I don't know nothing else, let me know Jesus. Let me do that. If I don't do nothing else out there, let me obey Jesus. Go tell him that Jesus is real. That he is real. Yeah, I told Jones, now Jones, don't you go down there and preach what I told you to preach. John had his own mind made up what he go, what's going to take place and what's going to happen. So he decided he'd just act up on his own. Thought God told him, after God got him out of that fish, out of that fish's belly, and turned him loose, he said, now go down and preach what I told you. And the Bible, and the Bible said John did double time down there and told him. Because God had a message for the people. They, they repented. God had a message. So it ain't, it ain't us calling ourselves. We can't go ahead and choose this stuff. You know? And then when we do, we want it just for the name. You know? I had people come to my church, oh, I'm prophet, so and so. I said, well, they, you ain't no prophet. You got a name. Your name ain't no prophet. No, you got a name. What's your name? That's a title you're trying to listen to this. That may sound like I may be criticized, but that'll be all right. Just make good criticism. First Corinthians. First Corinthians uh, twelve, verse eighteen. And I'm gonna let you go. Oh, I appreciate the Lord tonight for somebody called me and see was all right up here. Yeah, I'm all right. Uh, I think they're concerned about this election. Talk to some up here by myself. Jesus, you I'm, you gonna smite them? I'm gonna be left alone here, but I'm not alone. You know, you can be around a thousand people and still a, a devil and still get to letting Jesus don't stand up for you and help you. But you can be alone, not alone. Don't Jesus be with you? Don't Jesus be with you? Second Corinthians, first Corinthians, I mean twelve, verses uh, eighteen. Listen to what it says here. But now. Has God set the members, every one of them in the body, as it had pleased him? God set every one of these members in the body as it had pleased him. It pleased God to do. Put the apostle in the prophet. Whatever ministry you got, whatever work you got, thank God you got a prayer ministry. Thank God for you. You got a ministry in carry for you. Thank God for you. He put him in the church because we are fitly journey together that we can supply, we can help supply strength to you. You supply strength to me, to every working part of the body, every part of that body, the fingers and the hands and the, and the arms and the elbows and the shoulders and all this stuff. It support each other, support one another, strengthen one another. And the, and the Bible says God has placed in the body these men according as it pleased him. That pleases him. But now as God set the members and every one of them in the body as it has Pleased him. Thank like whatever ministry you got for, whatever it is, God has put that in there and has pleased him. You pray. Some of you pray. Thank God for your prayer. Some of you encourage folks. Thank God just keep it up. Keep encouraging folks. Yeah. Because the Lord is a man that I've chosen you. You need to and ordain you as you go. And it's for whatever God gives you for. Get in for you. Get in for you to. Then if you get the big head, then if you go out there and take what God gave and try to make the money off of it, you know, a lot of these people write these books and read they sell them because what God has done for them. Because of their name the name of Jesus. Because they're confessing Christian. They say, well, I, I, I know this one minister. Man, I, I say a book. Yeah, if you, you, if you just an ordinary person, you, you, we wouldn't be buying your books. you buying your book because you, you're using the name of Jesus and the ministry. And, and people are buying it. So God ain't, ain't giving these things for us to Get and try to make money for ourselves. Just make money for the work of God, for the ministry, or for the mission field. You, you, somebody. I told you. I think there was Sunday. Somebody called me and told me they had a dream of me. Sister Sandra said she had a dream of me that I, I have her to help me in some kind of work, and I'm getting some kind of stuff together in the bank. And so I told her to work this out. And she said this one bank account. 
So she told me, said, Brother Arthur, you, 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 see, you, ain't got, you ain't got enough money or something. This ain't sufficient. And I told her, look in the other bank account. So she went to another bank account. And so I had $2 million in there. I said, my God. Now listen, folks, I ain't got no $2 million. I ain't got $1 million. I ain't got a half a million. I ain't got a third. I ain't got a tenth cent of a million. I ain't got listen. Now I'm saying, Lord, what would I do with, you know, I, I thought about it. They told me, I thought, what would I do with $10 million? I mean, $2 million. What would I do with ten? Two million dollars. I I try to figure out, you know, because ain't that for the money? What would I do with two million dollars? What would I do with it? Except help the minister do something. I got a house to live in. I got clothes. I got furniture. I got food. I got transportation. You know. So what would I do with two million dollars other than just to try to do something for God with it and to help people? You know, people that need help, help them. And, before me just to have two million dollars in the bank and just say, so I can feel safe and secure. You, you feel safe and secure. You know, the rich man tried that. You feel safe and secure, folks, in Jesus. You don't feel safe and secure because you got a million dollars, two million dollars, three million dollars. The rich man had that. Then the Bible, Lord God told us to listen here. Remember in your lifetime? So do you remember in your lifetime? All that stuff you had, do you remember in your lifetime? No one got to tell us that. Do you remember your lifetime? You had everything, had that. You didn't do nothing for nobody. You didn't help nobody. You didn't even try to help the minister. You didn't try to help win souls. You didn't try to do nothing. I said, God, what would I do? Two million dollars. Oh, I wish God would bless me. I can, my, my son, my son back there, my grandson told me, don't worry about it. So don't worry about that. We'll take care of that faith. We helped it. You don't have to worry about it. And you don't have to try to figure out what you do with two million dollars. We'll take care of that. I said, you're not mad, you will. But let me tell you something. I would have a mind to try to do something for Jesus, folks. I try to help folks and do something for folks. I, I really, you know. I ain't living for nothing, man. I, I get it. Me and Brother Fred talking. He said, Lord, that blessed me. Like when I go to the gas station, I can, I can fill my tank up. I said, me too. I do it sometimes, sometimes I don't, but I, I'm able to do it. You know. And I got food in my refrigerator here, you know. Got a wall of metal sitting here on the, on the counter. Man, what else can I ask for? Man, I got a watermelon on the counter. I ain't never cut. So what else, man? What did I do to me, down? I got a watermelon sitting on the counter. Thank God. I appreciate the Lord. But listen, when God give us, the ministry that he give us is for the perfecting of the saints. Whatever you whatever you receive of the Lord, for remember, it ain't for you. It ain't for you to glow in. It's for you to help somebody. Thank God. Give him a hand and pray. We appreciate the Lord tonight. I thank God for we getting it probably watch some of this election results. But we're going to be praying that everything go good. There will be no no kind of rough housing going on, no kind of violence and stuff like that. they got to see us do. Hold on. We're going to pray. Father, thank you. Tonight, I appreciate you, Lord, for... God, I appreciate you, Lord, for commonness, for being common. I thank you, Father, for being a common person, Lord. I'm not high man and not I've alluded, but just being a common one scripture that the common people heard you gladly. Thank you, Father. Give me a, a spirit of mind, God. I'm not just to have a common spirit. Thank you, Father. Lord, put your love inside of me, God. Not, not, not. Let me exalt myself. I thank you for that, God. In the name of Jesus Christ, that walk with us tonight. Lord, be with us, God. Be with your people. In the name of Jesus, pray. Lord. Keep us covered with your blood. Keep man your cross. Lord, everyone out there that have a need, tonight, God, I'm asking you, Lord, to meet that need. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, every prayer request, I'm asking you to move for them, God. Help them. Hold them up. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, God, we decree it to be so. And I thank for those that are tuning in, those that are here this service. I pray, God, somewhere it'll help them to realize what they're supposed to do and help them to cleave to it. Help them to use what you have given them. It's just to help somebody. It's to encourage somebody else. In Jesus' name, help me always, Lord. Well, God, walk. God, in your will. Walk in your mind. Walk in your way. In the name of Jesus, I thank you. Praise God. Give him a hand and pray. We appreciate the Lord for all of you tonight. We cover your prayers. Keep us up in prayer. They got us. Yeah, but we pray for Sister Madden. She lost her brother. Man, keep that family up in prayer. And the Lord will strengthen them. 
and and we appreciate everybody. And God bless you until the next time. Maybe Saturday service. We, we appreciate you and we covered your prayer. God bless you.